you ever struggled seeing with bow rise or sluggish takeoff or porpoising bounce when not in perfectly smooth water? It doesn't have to be that way. With a simple upgrade, it can transform your ride, giving you instant stability, improved efficiency, and smoother handling without constant adjustments. If you're battling rough waves or trying to get on plane faster, Nautica Smart Tabs deliver automatic performance optimization. No manual controls required. All right, let's check and see what's inside the box here. So I just got this. It says it's from Electrolab. Came USPS ground. And uh, it came within just a few days, so that's pretty cool. I did go and print out uh, sort of the specifications around this smart tab specifically, so I can get an idea of what I needed and where I needed to put it on my boat. And I also printed out the PR500, which is the adapter bracket for being able to lift up the trim tab if you want to like turn it off, so to speak. And so I printed out the instructions for that as well. So let's go ahead and see what's inside here. Take a look at it. comes with looks like the instructions of course and this is updated so it looks like part of the manual for the template that you would use for the 25 degrees and where to drill the holes so set this aside it's got the uh, PR500 bracket that I ordered which is different looks like it has all the hardware and stuff in there looks like it's pretty nice and of course the nitrogen filled shocks and we have the hinges, stainless steel, and this is the, it's like the sealant that you would put on the back of this. I'm going to go ahead and use the Marine 5200 adhesive as well. And of course, it looks like it has all the hardware that you need in the brackets. And then this is, looks like the stainless steel plates that we need. Yep, so we have to like they have a cover on. We'll have to just uh, peel that cover off. Get this all set up so let's go ahead and get this out of the box and get this set up for the instructions as far as the tools go for this job after i looked through the instruction manuals and inspected the hardware kits of the different types of fasteners that are involved here here's the tools i think we're going to need for today's job so i got some acetone to wipe back of the boat where we're going to put the hinges down and the sealant so that it adheres well so we've got some acetone and the screwdriver to open that up I've got some 3M 5200 uh, fast gear. Of course, I got some Sharpies, a couple different colors because I have a black boat. So I got silver and a pencil, razor blade, scissors, in case I need to open the hardware packages or cut the tape, the adhesive tape there, a drill gun, a, pen, a punch, it was a 730 seconds drill bit, a countersink, and I use uh, a hole that I cut out of my boat previously to test uh, drilling to make sure I get the hole right the first time. So I usually practice drilling a hole in this thing and then fastening one of the fasteners in there and see what it looks like. I uh, always countersink my holes so that I don't end up doing that and splitting them out. Then uh, as far as the hardware itself, fasteners themselves go, we're gonna need a half inch wrench and a 7 16 wrench and socket, a half inch, half inch and 7 16 and then a couple of Phillips screwdrivers for the stainless steel screws. I think that's all we're gonna need to get this project going. Okay, so here's an interesting point. So this is part of the template, so they tell you to cut out a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna probably use a two by four um, at 25 degrees so we can get the right angle. That's fine. And then here's the hole template. But I remembered, oh, they sent us a new hole template, you know. So at first I lined it up here. And gosh, you can see the holes do not align on this one. That's why they sent the new one, right? Well, me not trusting anything, I decided to try the new one. Updated, please use. So, okay, cool. Um, just gonna use this little thing here and what do you know? The holes still do not align. So if you take the time to cut this little template out and tape it up on your boat and drill these holes out, they're not gonna be aligned where you want them. Isn't that interesting and not cool? Um, so I am going to be contacting 
Nauticus and letting them know that their new updated template um, is still not working. And I'm glad I caught that. So I ended up drilling extra holes in my boat that would really make me upset. Okay, here's our work area for the day. I think I got everything all set up over here. All right, so here's my Tahoe 185S and here is the ST1290 Nauticus Smart Taps. So we're gonna install them, even though this is kind of a weird setup because it doesn't fit by itself right here or there. So I'm gonna end up going kind of at an angle like this. So half inch up and start about here and install it over there. So we're gonna go ahead and get that template template set up. I did grab some blue painter's tape so that I could tape these on there, these hinges, and make sure I got them exactly where I wanted them and that everything looks like it's gonna work right. And one of the things I was worried about was this ladder when it comes down, if it was gonna interfere. I don't think it's going to be in any way, but I don't want somebody like bumping their foot on it or stepping on it or potentially even cutting themselves on it. So I'm going to be looking for that as a problem area to keep my eye on. So let's go ahead and get this started. And I'm going to get that uh, measured out and uh, taped up there. And if it's all looking good, then we're going to go ahead and mark our holes and start drilling holes in my boat. Well, I'm back. It's been about, I don't know, five or six minutes going around this whole thing on both sides. And uh, the entire thing was sharp all the way around. Even in the corners, it was really sharp. If somebody would have like bumped their hand or their foot on that, they definitely would have potentially cut themselves. But I smoothed out and rounded out the edges pretty darn good with my fine file. And then I came back along with 220 sandpaper block that I had and uh, really just kind of smoothed it out even a little bit more. So went around the entire thing with my finger to make sure there's absolutely no sharp spots. So, all right, now, I guess it doesn't matter which side, right? Because it looks like they are identically drilled. So I guess just pick the best side face and choose that to be the upside. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And Hey look, the holes line up. That's cool. And we got about a half inch gap on the bottom. Like we're supposed to have. All right. So I think the next step is to go ahead and get the 5200 put in these holes and maybe a little bit around the threads as well, just to be extra cautious. Then I'm going to put the sealant tape that they provide in the kit over the top of these holes. And then we're just gonna go ahead and line this all up and uh, screw it down.
Okay, the brackets also had some sort of protective coating on them, and so I went ahead and took that off. But again, the edges were really sharp. Well, they weren't as sharp as this piece was. So I didn't use my file, but I did use my sandpaper to go around these edges that are gonna be sticking up like this, just to make sure nobody brushes their foot or hand on that and gets cut in some way. So they're nice and uh, smooth around the edges now. So it says, install it to the two closest ones normally. Time to drill some more holes in the boat. Let's go ahead and punch the center point for the drill bit to be guided into. I think I have one side complete. Let's take this clamp off and our little template, make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. So that's gonna push up against it when the water force comes against it. Okay, and then I should be able to like retract it like that. Okay, just a quick note before I put this thing in fast forward mode and just bust out this other side. I went ahead and took the protective coating off of this one and one side was rounded over really nice. The other side, razor sharp. It must be a quality issue. Maybe it was a Friday. Or maybe like everything else, the pandemic ruined our quality issues that we have in the world. Don't know, don't care, I fixed it. This one here was super sharp, uh, unlike the other one was just a little sharp. I went ahead and took the file to this and the sanding block because, you know, it's sharp. You don't want sharp things on your boat. It hurts people. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing busted out.
Well, it's the next day. I ran out of GoPro battery last night and I ran out of daylight and honestly I ran out of patience as well with this project. It was much harder than it had to have been. Just so many little issues I ran into because of quality issues, which I've documented them all and we'll be talking to Nautica just about that, but I have it done, finally. I actually just got home from work and I went and bought that nut and bolt to match the other one exactly at Ace Hardware. It cost me all of about a dollar, not a big deal. Stainless steel, it's all matchy-matchy, everything's good. And so I got the entire thing put together here. Wanted to kind of show what the final product looks like all installed. I like the way it looks now and I like the way it operates too. It's pretty easy. You can see this just goes on the bottom there and lifts up like that and uh, changes it so that it's no longer going to be touching the water and easy to put right back down again just like this. So easy peasy. It looks good. Got a quick view from down here. Trying to make that level so y'all can see what that looks like. Got that half inch gap up underneath there like they said in the instructions. So I guess the next step is to take it out into the lake now. Give it a shot, see how it performs and see if it does all the things that I'm hoping I get out of these. I'm hoping one, that it'll plane better and faster and at a slower speed. Uh, two, that it, slow, that it minimizes the porp porpoising. And three, I'm hoping that it sort of um, stabilizes in rougher water and whatever else I can get out of these. So we'll see how that goes. Out on the lake, you can see without the smart tabs, the bow rises quite a bit more than with the smart tabs. It gets on plane a lot faster and a lot slower speed as well. You can hear the engine change a little bit in the second clip where it, you can hear it increasing as it gets on plane faster. Here in the second clip you can see we're getting quite a bit of porpoising and a little bit rougher water. There were some wakeboard boats out there. Hard to tell here but the waves were was kind of funky waves that just kind of caused it to bounce. Whereas below we were in a lot rougher water out in a different lake that day and it didn't hardly bounce at all. It was very stable and really a lot smoother ride. In this last clip without the smart tabs we had to slow it down quite a bit going through some of the rougher waves because we were getting pretty beat up. Whereas below, I just plowed right through it kind of at full speed and didn't really feel impacts as much. It really smoothed it out quite a lot. That's the Nautica Smart Tabs. I really like them and they make a big difference in our boating experience. Although there was some quality issues in the very beginning, I think it was well worth the money we paid for them. If you found this helpful, please give it a like. And if you want to check these Smart Tabs out, there are links in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.